Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Ted Carr and I had an amazing weekend. It's actually Sunday still, but Friday and Saturday were unreal. I went to Faded in the Park in Surrey, British Columbia. You can't really see the wristband there, but it says Faded in the Park on there. And the way I found out about this festival is I was downtown Vancouver shooting some photos and videos for a girl who never showed up. That's right, I was supposed to meet this girl downtown and she just no-showed. But these things happen for a reason. Everything in life is perfect. I believe in perfection. I, I, I don't think that you need to strive for perfection. I think that everything just is perfect. Everything that happens has to happen. Everything is meant to be. I don't believe that it wasn't meant to be. There's no such thing as it wasn't meant to be because everything that's not here, everything that hasn't happened yet or everything that never happened, it obviously, that's all perfect. That's all the way it needs to be. Everything is the way it needs to be. So anyways, this girl didn't show up, but I went downtown Vancouver anyway, and on my way there, this guy sees me with the camera, and I think he's gonna like jack me. He's like looking at me, and I'm like, God damn, we'll see my camera. And then he, uh, he gets up and he asks me what kind of work I do, and I tell him I do some freelance photography and videography. And he hands me his card and says he's looking to increase the roster on his crew. And I was like, oh, what does your crew do? And he's like, oh, we make documentaries and music videos. And I'm like, sweet, that's what I want to do. That's what I wrote down on here. That's what I wrote on my vision board. That's like the goal I've set for myself. That's the vision I've created for myself. I want to be working on documentaries and music videos. And so he's like, yeah, man, send me an email and, and, and we'll, uh, we'll connect. And so as I'm downtown Vancouver, I'm like super pumped. I'm like, wow, I got this guy's business card and... This girl didn't show up, I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna take pictures of random people. So I started taking pictures of random people, it brings me down some different streets I've never been down before. And I see this poster, it's like chain smokers. And I'm like, what? Chain smokers, when are they coming? That'd be sick to see them. Uh, they're like my favorite band, I listen to them like every day on repeat, love their, love their music. And then I'm like, oh my god, it's like in three days, I'm gonna apply to be a videographer at that event. And so I get home that day, I set the camera like this, I make a video, say, Hi, I'm Ted Carr, and I want to apply to be a volunteer, and I want to apply to help film and shoot photos, or whatever you guys need done, just let me know, and I'll be there. They never opened the video, they never opened the email, and uh, <laughs> they obviously didn't get back to me. So, that's all good. I got to the event, and I see that the guy who had handed me the card, their crew, his crew, is running the event. His crew is, like, doing the videography, is doing the photos, and I'm like, wow, like, they're the guys who are in charge of this whole event, making it look cool for, for, the, for the marketing, for the video. I'm like, sweet. So I see the guy shake his hand. I'm like, hey, man, we met a couple days on the Sky, a couple days ago on the Sky Train. What's up? How you doing? How's the event? And he's like carrying like a $60,000 camera in his hand. He's holding a, an, an epic red. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's like the dream camera. And he's like, hey, man, I got your email. We're definitely going to get in touch, blah, blah, blah. Like, hit you up soon, no problem. So I was like, oh, cool, 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 cool. That's, that's, that's sweet. So... The connect was made, you know, I, I met him a couple days prior and then I met him again at the festival, so that was amazing. But uh, what's really amazing is the fact that you can go to these music festivals and you don't need to do drugs to have a good time. And yet there are so few people at the event not doing drugs, not drinking alcohol. So few people. And when you find one of those people, not only in the reflection of the mirror, but you find one of those people outside of yourself, you're like, oh, hey, there's that girl, there's that guy who's also not doing any drugs and having a good time. It's really cool. It's really refreshing. And even if someone is doing drugs, but you, like, visualize them and you see them as the kind of person, or you see, you see them in that moment as someone who's not on any drugs, they're just, like, totally sober and they're having a good time, they're, you know, they're straight edge or whatever, it's, it's a really cool feeling you get. You're like, wow, that girl is straight edge, man. She doesn't need to do drugs to have a good time. For all I know, she could be on drugs, but just imagining her not on drugs is, like, really, really cool. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying this. I guess because I don't need to do drugs to have a good time. And when I go to these fruit festivals in Denmark and London and New York, nobody's on drugs and everyone's having a fantastic time. Meanwhile, at these music festivals, everyone's just like rocked on Molly and cocaine and alcohol and uh, all sorts of other stimulants, I'm sure. But uh, I've, I've personally, I've gotten high off drugs, I've gotten high off life, and I would prefer to get high on life every single time. And so Friday I got high on life, Saturday I got high on life, and both days I went to bed around like 1, 1.30 a.m. And before bed each night I got into bed and then I sat down to meditate for 10, 15 minutes, I forget. I think the first night was like 15 minutes with Headspace, and then last night was 10 minutes with Headspace. I bought the year subscription so I can select like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. And uh, doing that meditation right before bed, even though I'm like losing like three hours of sleep because I normally go to bed at like 
be 9 30 10 p.m even though i'm going to be like 1 1 30 I'm, i'm still getting some really deep rest in that meditation and i'm really reprogramming my mind to stay cool stay calm stay collected even though i know i'm three hours shy of some, some proper sleep and i wake up in the morning the first thing i do again is meditate 10 or 15 minutes with with headspace i highly recommend getting the app and i just wake up and i'm like frick yeah man let's do this let's go again And it's an amazing feeling you get after you meditate. It's an amazing feeling you get after you meditate. And what is meditation? It's basically just sitting down, closing your eyes, and focusing on your breath. Being here now. Feeling your butt on the ground. Feeling your hands clasped together. Feeling your wrists on your knees, wherever you put your hands. Feeling your feet on the floor. It's just being here now. Bringing all your senses to now. Like right in this present moment. It's a practice of being in the now. And it gets you high man it gets you high and that high you can carry through out the day there's no come down from the high there's no come down from the high of meditating there's come downs when you take drugs for sure what goes up must come down if you use synthetic drugs but if you're using natural highs man you're you're recalibrating your hormones you're reshifting your focus the only come down is a good night's sleep it's a good night's sleep so There are ways of getting high naturally. I recommend looking into some breath work, some cold showers, no fat, meditation, and uh, you guys will find out more more how to get high with those natural methods there. Uh, but I gotta say, at this festival, man, I met a couple cool, really cool people. I met a girl named Sarah and I met a girl named Ashley. And uh, both of them were vegan, and both of them watch YouTube videos of other vegans. And uh, I remember one of the girls telling me that she doesn't like to drink, but when she's around her friends who are drinking, she wants to at least look like she's drinking. So she'll grab a beer, go to the washroom, pour it out, and uh, she'll fill it with juice or kombucha. And then she'll come back and then she'll be drinking the, the bottle of beer in front of them. Just to, just to, uh, you know, fit in just just to just to hold the vibe for them you know that way it's not awkward for her it's not awkward for her friends thinking oh my god this girl's not drinking like don't judge us blah 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 so it's, it's cool for everyone and i thought that was really cool just pouring out the beer and filling it with kombucha that's rad that's priorities right there so her story reminded me how when you do a drug once or twice or three times or whatever you learn you can learn how that drug makes you feel So when you drink alcohol for the first time or the second time or third time, whatever, you learn that it makes you a bit woozy, makes you a bit sloppy, makes you a bit carefree, whatever, blah, right? You learn that. And then without even needing to drink it, you can act like you're drunk. You can act the part. And you can kind of get that same feeling as if you were drunk. Actors do it all the time. When an actor is acting in a movie, like let's say they're acting angry, they have to actually get angry to play the angry part. They can get rid of the anger right away after the set, hopefully. But even for actors like Will Smith, when he has, has to play the part of a depressed character, he'll rent a hotel room for a couple weeks and stay away from his family just for a couple weeks just to get in the depressed state. So you can cultivate these states at will. So when you do a drug like mushrooms and it, or acid or whatever and it, and it makes you like uh, see things differently and feel the reality around you differently, that's just the plant teaching you how, what you're capable of feeling without the drug, without the plant. And so when people are rocked on cocaine or alcohol or whatever they're on at these festivals, molly, ecstasy, whatever, they actually don't need those drugs to feel that way. As crazy as that might sound, they're able to bring in those states at will just by imagining that they're on molly. And this happened to me at the festival. I was around tons of people who are doing ecstasy. I didn't need to do ecstasy. And yet I'm walking around with almost like a clenched jaw. Like I'm just like... It's because I'm around these people, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I remember what it feels like to do ecstasy back in high school. And, like, I would hate to do that now, but, like, just being around these people, it, it made me, like, really, like, you know? It's really trippy, man. I kept finding myself, like, clenching my jaw and talking to people and stuff. It's, it was really weird. Uh, I've never actually experienced that before, but I guess that's what happens when you're just empathetic, empathetic for these people, and uh, you can feel what it feels like to be high. So, yeah, I just want to say, like, next time you go to a party, guys, like, don't feel you need to do any drugs or alcohol. Just go there and bring your orange juice or bring your kombucha or whatever it is and just act the part. You don't need to lie either. If someone asks you what you're drinking, you say, oh, I'm drinking some kombucha. Or someone asks you what drugs you're taking, you say, oh, nothing. I'm just high on the music or whatever. Um, 
it's, it's totally doable, it's totally possible, and I would highly encourage you guys to do that. Just remember that, the, like, for something as simple and basic as, like, marijuana or whatever, when you smoke it, you're getting high, you're, you're changing the way you feel, you're changing your state of mind, and then when you come down off that drug, if you can remember how that felt to be high, you can just bring yourself back into that state at will with memory. And I do this when I'm on car trips, when I'm feeling really nauseous in the back seat. The one thing that would help me get rid of the nausea back as a child, or as a child, <laughs> back as a teenager, I would just smoke some weed, and then the nausea would go away. But now if I'm in the back of a car seat and I'm feeling really nauseous, I just pretend I'm high. All of a sudden I kind of like, um, you know, squint my eyes a bit and I just like, Days out, and just act really calm. It's like, just feel like burnt out almost, you know? <laughs> like, you, like really slow thoughts. And the nausea goes away, the placebo effect in action. So you can go to raves like this and you don't need to take ecstasy, you don't need to do cocaine, you just have a good time, full natty, and uh, you wake up high, you keep the high going. I was dancing in the shower today listening to chain smokers. I just got out of the shower, you can see my hair is kind of wet still. Like. I woke up high. I was still like, I was still like moving. It was so weird, man. Uh, it's just these, these natural highs. They last so much longer than the synthetic highs, and they're not gonna freaking destroy your brain cells like those drugs as well. So that's really cool. But uh, yeah, I just wanna give a shout out to all the vegans. Give a shout out to all the straight edge people who go to parties. And um, hope you guys have a fantastic summer. And I want to give a shout out to chain smokers. Those guys were unbelievable. Those guys were amazing. Shout out to the organizers of this event, man. The security, holy crap, the security was on point. I probably saw like six or seven hundred meter sprints, or two hundred meter sprints between the security and some guy who tried to sneak in or some guy who stole someone's camera, or some guy who, I don't know what the heck happened. They were just running away from the security. Security just booked after them. It was really cool seeing that race. Um, and then also shout out to the people who did sneak into the event, man. You guys got balls. There's a lot of people who just hopped the fences. And uh, like as much as I encourage you paying to support an event that you believe in, it's also just like a testament to the human will. Like if you want something, you will find a way to make it happen. Even if you have no money, you'll find a way to hop the fence. So if you want it, you'll find a way. If you don't want it, you find an excuse. A lot of people don't want to come to the event. They said, oh, the lineup's not that great. They said, oh, I don't have any friends to go with. They said, oh, I don't have time. Or, oh, I'm working. Or, oh, I don't have enough money. Whatever, it's like, you can use any excuse, but the thing about using an excuse is like the person listening, man, they know it's not really because of what you're saying. It's because of you just really don't want it. And that's totally fine not to want something in life. If you don't want to go to the festival, that's all good. If you don't want to do anything in life, that's all good. And maybe you'll say you'll use an excuse instead of saying I don't want to, whatever, because people like an ex explanation. But when someone tells me they don't want something, I don't ask why. Because I don't want to hear an excuse. I just want to hear that they don't want it. That's good enough for me. But yeah, shout out to the organizer, shout out to the bands, man. Getter was sick, Getter was amazing. Kyle, Kyle was really good as well. Nightmare was dope. Uh, I didn't see the Lost Frequencies, but uh, they were supposed to be really good as well. And then, of course, uh, oh, I saw Wiz Khalifa as well, but um, yeah, I, I prefer the Chainsmokers, man. Chainsmokers are amazing, they're great. Um, so yeah, hope to see you guys at some more festivals this summer. And uh, keep it drug free, keep it clean, keep it lean, and um, keep it serene, baby. Peace out. My name is Ted Carr. Thanks for watching. If you guys want some more videos of me chit chatting, then um, subscribe. And if you have any questions about anything, comment down below, and I'll be sure to read those comments. And maybe I'll even answer a couple of them. All right. Peace out, guys. Much love.